spirit speak to your heart and as I always say you are about to experience a life changing word now before we go into the word of the Lord I want you to all caps I'm gifted I want you to all caps I'm gifted because I want you to begin to prophesy over your life of who God said you are because I believe once we start prophesying over our own lives who God said we are it does not matter what anybody else says or think about us yes all caps I'm gifted that's going to put you on fire because you're letting the devil you're letting demons know I am gifted by the power of the Almighty God and I'm ready to walk in ministry so let's go to the word of the Lord we're going to go to 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 verse 1 and then we're going to read verses 7 8 and 9 again 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 verse 1 drop down to verses 7 8 and 9 and this morning we're going to talk about I have this treasure I have this treasure. People of God, get ready. God is going to share a relevant and timely word with you this morning that's going to excel you and to your next level. Let's go into the word of the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1, and then verses 7, 8, and 9. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. 7, 8, and 9, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. I need you to hear something. I want to go back to 7, 8, and 9. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side. That's the flesh. Yet not distressed. That's the spirit. We are perplexed, that's the flesh, but not in despair, that's the spirit. We are persecuted, flesh, but not forsaken, spirit. Cast down, flesh, but not destroyed, spirit. So you are watching and you're hearing how that the spirit of the living God inside of you, inside of me, continues to counteract what the enemy has been trying to do our entire life. But let's talk about this. I have this treasure. So it's not about the container because the container is perishable. It's the priceless contents that's inside of the container. It's called the treasure. And every treasure you and I have ever known of, we've read, we've defined, it's always gifts inside of the treasure. Hallelujah. And so understand when I said to you all caps, I'm gifted because you have a treasure in the earthen vessels. So the earthen vessel is something that's going to perish, but inside of the earthen vessel, you have this treasure. This treasure, it what, it, it's what keeps you going on the battlefield. It gives you the power. It allows you to swim against the current. This treasure helps you get to a place where you refuse to give up. You refuse to lay down. You refuse to backslide. You refuse to allow the enemy to get victory because you have something inside of you that's greater than you. And it's called this treasure that's inside this earthly vessels. One writer said it like this. He said, he said, it is priceless contents. And I love that. Priceless contents. That means that what God has put inside of you and what God has put inside of me, it's getting ready to illuminate in the atmosphere that when they see us, they will not help but seek God because we're going to be walking in our power. We're going to be walking in the authority of God. And mind you that when Apostle Paul talked here in the third chapter, he said, I wanted to show them the spiritual authority that God had given to me because he realized I've got something inside of me that's greater than me. I've got something built inside of me that helps me when I cannot help myself. I've got something inside of me, this treasure that keeps me moving when I feel like I'm about to lose my mind. But the treasure, hallelujah. Inside of the earthly vessels allows us to navigate through different times of our lives, different seasons and different levels because what God is doing in your life, he's promoting you through the treasure that he's putting in you. Because be mindful, you have an anointing in you. You are gifted, you have authority. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. Now all you've got to do is lift your head up, put your chest out and understand that God 
has a treasure inside of me that will cause me to walk in the authority in which God has commanded me to walk in. And there is no demon, there is no devil bad enough, there is no hater bad enough to stop what God has planned. Because what God has ordained, my God in the name of Jesus, he will maintain. I wish I had somebody here that the power of God was falling on your life right now. God said, what I ordain, I will maintain. So the apostle Paul comes through the church at Corinth. Hear the word of the Lord. He comes from the third chapter and what he says is God is getting ready to take us from glory to glory. He is honoring what God has placed inside of him. When you and I honor what God has placed inside of us, we will begin to move like the power of God orchestrates. That means that every place that the sole of your feet, my feet tread upon, the Bible said it is our coast. I wish somebody would hear that this morning. You have no reason to fear because God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And what keeps you together? My God, in the name of Jesus, I feel God here. What keeps you together is not you. Because he said, it is not us. But it's the power, the ecstasy of the power is not of us, but it is of him. It's the treasure that's on the inside of us that allows us to go through when we don't know what's at the end. Because our mind has stayed on him. And he said, those minds that have stayed on me, I will keep them in perfect peace. I need you to understand that God is raining down on you peace that will pass all understanding. The pandemic is now your platform to illuminate who God said he is in your life. When Paul talks to the church of Corinth, he says, I want you to understand something. No matter what's coming and what's going, I have a treasure that's inside this earthly vessels. I've suffered, I've gone through, but I'm still here by the grace of God. It is the ministry that God has given us by the grace, unmerited, unearned, undeserved favor that will say you shall not faint. You cannot give up now. You will not put your head down. It's time for you to lift your head. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up the everlasting doors and let the king of glory come in. Who is the king of glory? He's the Lord our God, strong and mighty, mighty in battle. God, I'm speaking to somebody here today that you are stronger than you think you are. You are more powerful than you think you are. Matter of fact, here's the word. You have not seen nothing yet. Better days are in front of you because of what's on the inside of you. Hallelujah. I said better days are in front of you because of what's on side of you. And one writer says this greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So the greater part of you, that, that earthly vessel is about to illuminate in the atmosphere. It is about to show demons, devils, haters what God has said about your life. It is about to prove your anointing. Because the anointing on your life, the anointing on my life, it's heavy, it's powerful. It's an authentic anointing and nobody can snatch what God has given unto you. It's time for you to start preaching over your own life. Prophesying over your own life. Lay hands on your own self. I know the Bible says we can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. But imagine laying hands on yourself and saying, be thou healed. That's the power that's in that treasure that's on the inside of these earthly vessels. Because one day the earthly vessel is going to perish. It's perishable. But the consistency of the contents that's priceless on the inside. If this earthly house of my tabernacle shall dissolve. The Bible said, I've got another building not made by the hands of man. I need somebody to open up your eyes because God is getting ready to reveal to you. He's getting ready to show you who he is in your life, who he's already always been in your life. And now you're getting ready to hold the hand of God and you're going to allow God to order your steps in his word. This is your season. This is your time. This is your year. I care nothing about a pandemic because God. We serve a God that's King of kings and Lord of lords to the glory of God. The power of God is resting on your life right now as the word of God is being shared with you. The power of God is resting on your life and God is moving you into different venues, different levels. He's strategically placing you in the place that he promised for your life. That's why demons and devils are mad at you. That's why people are walking away from you. It's not because you're not who God said you are. It is just because you said you are who God said you are. And you are beginning to walk in what God said you can walk in. So get ready for people to start leaving and moving out of your way. Because the atmosphere that God has placed you in, the power that God has given you 
everybody cannot stand to be on the anointing that's on your life. Everybody will not be able to be around you. Do not get crazy when folks start leaving. Let them leave because when they leave, God's going to bring somebody, hallelujah, that's connected to him, that's connected to somebody that you need to be connected to. My God, with two or three are gathered together in my name, touching and agreeing, God said, I promise you, I would be in the midst. So Paul, the apostle Paul, church, talked to the church at Corinth and says, we might be going through, but we're not despairing. We may go through something, but we're not cast down. We might be persecuted, blessed be God, but because God has a treasure that's inside of us, we're not falling apart. Because we serve a God that can do anything but fail. And there's something inside of you called a treasure, my brothers and my sisters, that's been keeping you alive. When you felt like giving up, it wasn't you. It was the treasure that was inside the earthen vessel that told you, keep your head high. Walk in what God said you can walk in. Be who God said you can be. Do what God said you can do. I need somebody to understand that God is prophetically speaking and sharing with you this morning that you are more than a conqueror. Hey, God, I felt that for somebody here. You are more than a conqueror. Things been going crazy around you, but God said it's not what's around you, it's what's inside of you that's going to conquer the things that are around you. So that treasure, that treasure that's on the inside of you in the earthen vessel, while the earthen vessel seemed to be dealing with it from a natural perspective or a carnal perspective, the earthen vessel inside is the treasure. That's the power, that's the spirit, that's the anointing, that's the authority. That's the blessing, that's the favor. That's the move of God. That, that is the illuminating of God. God. Listen, God is illuminating your anointing. I'm telling you, when you walk in places now, they're going to see the glory. They're going to see the anointing on your life. I was at the airport, bless be God, on my way back from Philadelphia here to Fort Lauderdale. I checked my bags in. And I mess around and I, I left some water, a bottle of water in there. And of course, you know, you can't take that in. And he went in the bag and he got the water and he says, have a blessed day, man of God. Can you tell me what church you pastor? I'm telling you, that's not a pat on my back. I give all the glory to God, but it was the treasure. It is the treasure that's on the inside of me. There was nothing on the outside that indicated I was a child of God. It was what was on the inside because I had a sweatsuit on that indicated I have this treasure. This treasure keeps me moving. It gives me joy, unspeakable, full of the glory of God. It gives me peace, passive all understanding. It allows my anointing to, to run through rough waters. Blessed be the name of God. It allows me to walk spiritually wealthy and naturally wealthy. I wish I had somebody here that would understand. Not only will you be spiritually wealthy, but you'll be naturally wealthy because the Bible says that the wealth of the wicked have been stored up for the righteous. If the wealth of the wicked have been stored up for the righteous and you and I are the righteous, that means that something is getting ready to rain down on your life. God is getting ready to pour into your bosom, my God. And the Bible said these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. I wish I had somebody with all cap. I'm blessed. Ah, you can't shout it, but you can cap. I'm blessed. Hallelujah. When you know you're blessed, you don't need nobody to tell. You don't need confirmation that you're blessed. It will not be the cross that you wear. It will not be the, the attire that you wear. It's going to be that treasure that's on the inside of these earthly vessels. It's just going to keep showing. Isn't it amazing how that the treasure just keeps showing up? You get in trouble and you want to say something. Imagine if you would always say what you felt like saying. They wouldn't think we were saved. But the treasure that's on the inside of these earthly vessels, hallelujah, it keeps our mouth shut. Tells us what to do, what to say, when to say it, how to say it, and when not to talk. Sometimes my brothers and my sister believe not. The Holy Spirit says, shut up. I'll fight your battle. Don't say one word. Get in your prayer closet. Consult me about it. I'll handle it. So you got to make sure that when God is moving, you've got to let God move because it is not going to be about the earthly vessel. It is going to be about the treasure that's inside of the earthly vessel. And in every treasure, there is nothing but gifts. If you were to go home today and somebody was to put a treasure in at your feet and you begin to open it, nothing should come out of that treasure but gifts. I'm telling you, you are gifted by God. You've been anointed by God. You've been appointed by God. You've been chosen by God to do the will of God. And it is not you. The Bible says this, that therefore seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not. You have a ministry built inside of you. 
through the grace of God. Undeserved, unmerited, and unearned favor of God. He says, I've got a treasure inside your earthly vessels that the excellency of the power may not be of us, but it's going to be of God. For it is in him I live. It is in him I move. It is in him that I have my very being. When God woke you up this morning, he woke you up with that treasure, that treasure in the earthly vessels. In that treasure, there's gifts. There is power. There's authority. There's prophetic voice. When you start, when you speak over your own life, you're getting deep revelation because now God is beginning to give you insight. A lot of times we've been waiting for the preacher and we've been waiting for the pastors and, and the bishops and the apostles to speak over our life. But wait a minute. Let's pause for a moment. I have the same Holy Ghost that they have. So why can I speak over my own life? God loves me like he loves them. All he did was told them to lead Give us some guidance, some direction, but he never said you couldn't pray for yourself. As a matter of fact, one of the writers said, I've learned, I believe it was David, how to encourage myself in the Lord. So David was at a place where it seemed like nobody was there to encourage him. There was no choir, there was no praise team, there was no organ, there was no keyboard, there was no drums, there was no musicians, but there was a God. And David said, what I've learned how to do is encourage myself in the Lord. You're going to come in seasons of your life, my brothers and my sisters, where you are going to have to learn how to encourage yourself in the Lord. Yes, you're going to get word. He gave, he sent them apostles and prophets and evangelists and teachers and pastors for the edifying, for the building of the body of Christ. That's a wonderful word. And we're doing that. But now that we're not in the building, he says, I'm going to build the church. So when they go back in the building, they'll look like the church. They'll have power, my God. The, the lame will walk, the blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will be raised. I know that sounds crazy to somebody, but I believe God. Hallelujah. So I believe that God has allowed this to be so, that we will come out of our buildings. Because listen, some folk have got dedicated to the building. Because it's a beautiful edifice and the sanctuaries are wonderful. And God says, I'm going to move them out of the building so I can build them. He told Peter, upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying to you? So here it is. The pandemic has become your platform of allowing God to build you. So when we get back in the building, mm, we will look like the church that he built, not just a traditional church, not just the same old, same old. When God said we needed to push the reset button, the reset button is not to keep doing the same thing you did. When you push reset, that means start over again. I want to show you something. I want to give you revelation. So when Apostle Paul was speaking to the church at Corinth, he said, I need you to see something. I know that you're going through, but you have a treasure. I know you're persecuted, but you have a treasure. I know it seemed like you've been cast down, but you have a treasure inside of you because you're not destroyed. All of the things that are coming against you, that are coming against me, they are here to build us. They're here to make us better. They're here to help illuminate the power of the living God that's on the inside of us through that treasure. God would not give us a treasure in the earthly vessels if the treasure was not going to have gifts. Because there must be something in the treasure that's priceless contents because the container is perishable. Why would we have a perishable container and nothing on the inside contents that keeps it alive? Or that shows the power of the living God. So he says, you have this treasure in these earthly vessels, my God, that the power may be of God and not of us. So the power that's in us is through the treasure that's in the earthly vessel. Because the earthly vessel has no power. If we have power in the earthly vessel, we want to live forever. There would be no sense of dying because we try to stay here forever. But there is no power in the earthly. Anything that can perish, there's not real genuine but when it, is, when it cannot perish, it's power. For the things we see are temporal. The things we don't see are eternal. Shot God in the name of Jesus. So I want you to grab hold to this. I have this treasure. You have this treasure. In the earthly vessels. Yes, the earthly vessel can be carnal sometime. And, and it can stray away and think crazy. And, but that treasure has a tendency to bring us back to our spirit, man. It has a tendency to bring us back to that place that God called and ordained, that he predestined from the foundation of the world. 
that they that they that worship me must worship me not in the earthly vessel but in spirit and in truth god is a spirit are y'all hearing that so if the spirit is alive in you which is in the earth which is in the treasure that means that it allows the earthly vessel to begin to look more like what's inside of you are you hearing that so greater is he that's in you, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So there is something inside of us that's greater than we are. And it's called a treasure. It's called the Holy Spirit. It's our roadmap. It's our GPS from earth to glory. It's our navigation system from here to there. If you've ever been in a place where you felt like you was going to lose your mind, the only reason why you didn't lose it is because you depended upon the treasure. You went to God. You talked to the Spirit. You read a word. You sung a song. You did something greater than the earthly vessel wanted to do because the earthly vessel was about to give up. But there was something inside of you that was greater than you that keeps you alive, that gives you a song every now and then, that puts a scripture in your spirit that would allow you to sit in the car for an hour and just reminisce on where God brought you from. You ain't bothering nobody but that treasure Sometimes the treasure just brings tears down your face because you're looking from where God brought you from. And you're saying, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, had I not had this treasure, the enemy would have swallowed me. He would have destroyed me. I would have lost my mind. But I'm still here because of this treasure that's inside this earthly vessel. It's going to give you power, yoke-destroying anointing, authority, Wisdom, knowledge, spiritual understanding, you're highly favored. Please understand that, and I need you to prophetically speak that over your life. All caps, highly favored. When you deal with me, you're dealing with somebody that's highly favored. That's not an arrogant statement. That's what the Bible says. Sometimes the enemy will trick you into not speaking over your life because he will make you think that you're being arrogant. But the Bible says, I can call things that are not as though they were. I didn't say that. The word of God says that. After you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, you shall have power to do what? Be my witnesses. So I cannot go out there being afraid to be the witness. He's given me the power to be the witness. So if he's given me the power to be the witness, I've got to go out there and tell somebody about the God that saved me. That's not arrogance, my brothers and my sisters. That's just walking in the power that God gave you. That's just being relevant on the earth. Why go to church and not be relevant? Why go sit in the pew and not be relevant? Why be in this earth and not on this earth and not be relevant? Every man, every man I believe this want to be successful at something in his life. He wants to say, I've accomplished something. You know what that says? I want to be relevant. I want to be relevant. I don't want to come in this life walk unfulfilled, die, and have nothing that's called a legacy. The only way we have that is we must become relevant to the kingdom of God. For the Bible says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. See, we're trying to get things without seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then we want God to come and put his stamp on what we've already done. No, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto thee. Listen, God, through the treasure that's in the earthly vessel, says to Paul to say to the church of Corinth, everything that you are going through, it was in the flesh. But the spirit make up alive. And so even though I'm going through, I'm not going to give up. I wish I had somebody that would believe that. Even though you're going through, it's not, never time to give up because God is nigh and he's a promise keeper. So when the apostle Paul is speaking to here, the church of Corinth, he's encouraging their heart because he again just came back from the third chapter saying God is getting ready to take us from glory to glory. He was actually talking about the ministers of the new covenant. We are now ministers of the new covenant. I'm not talking about pulpit. You are a minister of the new covenant because of what God said about your life. You are a minister of the new covenant. You walk in power. You walk in authority. The grace of God has been bestowed upon your life. You know what God said about you. And the only reason that you're going through is to get through. You hear that? The only reason why you're going through is to get through. 
if, if, if you didn't go through anything, how would you know God is real? If God never brought you out of anything, how would you know? If you've never been sick, how do you know God's a healer? How do you know God is a miracle worker if he never worked a miracle in your life? It's good to hear somebody's testimony, but when you can have your own testimony of what God did for you, that's powerful. So the Apostle Paul says, I have my own testimony. I have a treasure that's on the inside of me in this earthly vessel. And it keep me, it's keeping me alive. Y'all know the old song? The Holy Ghost and fire keeping me alive, keeping me alive. It's all over me. Keep, that's, that's that treasure, y'all. That's what's been holding you together. That's what's been allowing you to grip yourself when, when, when it gets rough and it gets crazy. And, and you know the old pioneers were just rocking the pew, rock back and forth. They, they, they were admiring and they were honoring and humbled to honor and understand that I've got a treasure inside this earthly vessel. Because had it not been God, I would have fell and I would have fallen apart by now. lost my mind, gave up, threw the towel in, put the Bible away. But I have this treasure that will not allow me to throw the towel in, will not allow me to give up. Because if it was left up to you, you'd have been done by now. But the treasure inside of you, hallelujah, it gives you an unction and it tells you, get up and be about my father's business. It tells you God is not through with you yet. More, there's better days in front of you. I want you to really hear this. Your worst days, this is not a cliche saying, your worst days are over. Your worst days are over. Your best days are in front of you. So a man think if so is he. Your worst days are over. Your best days are in front of you. Now all you've got to do is get up, dust yourself off, <laughs> and begin to walk in the power that God has invested in your life. Because what God has for you, it is for you. And there's nothing anybody can do about what God has said about your life. I have this treasure. You have this treasure. And now let's treasure what God has put inside of these earthly vessels. God bless you, man. We love you so much. We're honored and humbled to be um, in front of you on this great Sunday morning. We're excited about God. Always, always excited about God because God is always doing something in our lives. So I say to you today, pick your head up, stick your chest out. You have a treasure and inside of it you're gifted, you're gifted, you're more than a conqueror. So I want to say this, if there's anybody that's watching us, um, if you don't know the Lord, here's the opportunity um, to give your life over to the Lord. Um, you can uh, put it on our Facebook, our Instagram, uh, just shoot us a message. Uh, first thing I'll get back to you. Uh, we'll bring you into the kingdom of God because we, we're, we're in uh, last days. I really believe that. We've heard our mom said, our grandparents, but I believe really in the last days. Look at the signs of the time. Look at what's happening in our world. But the earth is still the Lord's. And the fullness thereof and all they that dwell therein still belong to God. He is still in control. God has not relinquished his power to nobody. He's not relinquished his power. He's still almighty God. So if you want to give your life to the Lord, amen, just again, shoot us a, 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 a text, a comment. Um, we'll respond. We'll bring you on into the Lord um, and continue to walk in what God has ordained for you to walk in. Um, those of you that are tithing, you're, you're giving your offerings to the ministry, your gifts to the ministry, it's dollar sign Calvary 920. Um, that's probably going to pop up on your stream. Continue to give your tithes. Continue to give your offerings. Those are your gifts. And I say this, your 10% protects your 90. I'm not a money preacher at all. But I am one that know the word of God to the best of my ability when it comes time to giving. Your 10% protects your 90. So every dime you give, God says, give me the dime. I'll protect the 90. And that's amazing because Uncle Sam don't ask you. He take it. He don't trust you're going to give it to him. So he take it before you get it. But God says, bring me all the tithes. Watch this. Bring me all the tithes to the storehouse. That there be me meet in my house and prove me, it would say the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. And then I will rebuke the devourer for your name's sake and you should be a delightsome land. In that day when I make up my jewel, I will spare thee as a father spared his own son. So God said, when you give me a dime, I'll protect 90 and everything that comes to devour your stuff, I will rebuke it. Not your pastor, not your bishop, not your prayer partner. God said, I'll rebuke it because you honored my word. Hallelujah. Again, we're grateful, we're honored, and we're so humble 
um, to be in the presence of an almighty God. We love you. We pray that something was said today in the word of God that was relevant to you, that will cause you to be relevant upon the earth, that you'll walk in the fulfillment of what God called you to walk in. Uh, be mindful on Thursday night's Bible study. Thank God for First Lady who carried on Bible study this week while I was in Philadelphia. Thank God for her, the blessings and the favor of the Lord be upon her life. All of Calvary Outreach Fellowship Center members, thank you so much for your continued love, your continued support to the ministry. Even though we're not in the building, you're still giving, you're still showing love, you're still texting, you're still commenting, you're doing great things. First Lady and I, we love you so much for doing those things. We can't wait to get back into the sanctuary. Uh, to, to elbow you, to dap you, because there may not be no hugging, but we're going to elbow, dap you, and do all those good things. Love you guys dearly. May the power of God rest upon your life. And I want to tell you this. The devil is defeated, and God is exalted, and we have the victory. The devil is defeated. God is exalted, and we have the victory. God bless you. Love you much in Jesus' name.